Alik Riley, thanks so much for coming to the table and talking about something that is so important, and that is being a dad. Mm -hmm. I was horsing around on Facebook the other day, and I saw that you put up a video with some men who are fathers. You're about to have your first baby at age 34, mm -hmm. and you decided, gosh, I'm going to put together a baby announcement. Is that what you were trying to do in this, in this video by gathering guys together? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I just wanted just to create something special, unique uh, for my first child. Uh, it's a boy, we should say. It's going to be a boy. Yeah. And born in July, <laughs> coming <laughs> in July. Absolutely, yep. Um, a summer baby. But, uh, but yeah, we just wanted to, I just wanted to put something special for my kids, something from the watch back and, um, you know, and just realize and, and uh, that how special he was to me. And, uh, and this is a special uh, milestone in my life, you know. So you gathered together who to do this kind of welcome to the world baby? Yeah, I just called a, a couple of my comrades, uh, you know, friends and family, uh, and they uh, came uh, and they supported me and they talked. I wanted to um, ask some questions and advice on like what's it like how it like was dad? to be a dad for the first time and how was their experience and how did they handle it, how did they handle all the trials and tribulations. Um, all the emotion stuff, and uh, they gave me great advice, um, and I and I shared uh, my my first uh, um, uh, my first uh, reaction uh, to me finding out and things like that. Now let's talk about how important having a dad is. Your dad was not involved in your life. Tell me about that. Yeah, um, I know who my father is. Uh, me and him have a relationship. Uh, we started building a relationship for the past couple of years, but um, it was just me and my mother and my grandmother for a while. Um, I grew up uh, in New Jersey. Um, we didn't have a lot of money, uh, but I was still spoiled in a sense. Uh, my mother uh, moved me out to uh, Boston with my grandmother um, because she felt like she couldn't afford me at the time. And then my grandmother retired here in Connecticut, and uh, I went to high school up here, and I uh, went to college, uh, graduated from college up here, and um, we went through some we went through some real tough times when my mother decided to move to Connecticut. Uh, she had ran into the wrong people, and she had to fight her own demons for all her all personal reasons, and um, it put me in a situation where I had to choose um, and make a really, um, you know, a, a really. Uh, adult decision, which was to take custody of my sister. How old were you when you made a dis... Uh, she's 11 years younger than you are. Yes. And you made a decision to take custody of her, legal custody legal of custody. your sister. Dad's not involved, mom's in trouble. How old were you when you took custody of your I had of just your graduated sister? high school. Um, uh, I uh, graduated late in high school, so I was a, little, I was a year and a half older than most of my um, mm -hmm my peers. Um, so I took her right after high school uh, and uh, she stayed with me sometimes on college campus and uh, she was with me everywhere. I had to learn how to you know braid hair, put barrettes in the hair and stuff like that. So, so you were dad and yeah. a brother yeah. to your sister. Uh, yes that was the tricky part you know um, you know when she was young you know she was um, she loved me to death but as you know, times got, you know... Uh, you had to be a disciplinarian. Yeah, yeah, so it was a lot of, you know, why don't you just be my brother uh, than, you know, trying to be my father. And I wasn't doing that. It was just that um, it was just tough to kind of, you know, juggle those both roles around, you know, and try to, you know, uh, stay glue and, uh, you know, to, to, the, to the goal of where I needed her to be. I want to now take a look at just a part of this video that you shot with some other folks that are dads and some of the advice that they're giving you. Let's take a look at that. Okay. You know, we don't all have the answers when they, when they ask all the time, but I, I'm, always, I'm always a strong believer in if I don't have the answer, I'll find it. And I, and I tell my, my, kid, my kids the same thing. Life isn't about you and me anymore once you have children. It's about them. And what can you do for them to let them know that you love them. And without love, without spiritual guidance, you have nothing, man. You can have all the money in the world, but it means nothing to me if I don't have my kids. I am the, 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 the priest of my household. So whatever tone I set is the tone that is carried out. And I have to live 
that as an example in all aspects. You know, you look for a purpose for life, you know, and sometimes you think that you found it and you, you know, and, um, and then when something like this happens, you know that you found it. You can't be a parent without having fears. My son goes, spends the night with his boys. I don't know what's going on. I have a few fears of the father. Uh, one is there's no perfect parent. One is constantly, uh, constantly educating and, and, and finding out what real parenting is all about. Even though we've been doing it for over four years uh, now, you're still learning. Each child is different. I don't want my kids to bump into nobody. I don't, if they fall, I'm, I'm like I'm freaking out. I ain't gonna lie to you, both my kids are in my bed. They sleep with me and I'm cool with it. My son is five, when I, he's right next to daddy. Um, at the end of the day, when your kids are going through different phases of their life, there's different circumstances, so there's different fears. So my son's five, he goes to Tinker, and right now, my biggest fear is people hurting his feelings, and how does he deal with that when people say nasty things to him, and bullies. It is tough to be mm. a dad. Yeah. So out of this video, people started to see this, because you've put it out there. Mm. From this video, you have kind of put a group together called We Became Men with a tagline through fatherhood. What do you plan to do with this group? Are you going to mentor? What, where are you going, and do you know? Because um, it's resonating with people. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, we're in the very early stages of it. Um, so we do have a lot, of, uh, a lot of people, you know, coming to us, asking us, you know. You did some questions. radio shows. Exactly. I brought you in here. Yeah, and um, we've also been invited to speak for a few schools. We don't have a lot of details right now, but we're trying to get in to speak to the schools uh, before Father's Day. Um, what we... Our three principles for our We Became Men are principles, love, uh, I'm sorry, love, values, and protection. Um, uh, we feel like uh, we're, we want to build a community uh, through Connecticut and beyond. Um, how do they get a hold of you? Somebody, if this is starting to resonate with somebody else, how did, you started a blog, is yes, that correct? Yes, We Became Men, um, and that's uh, dot com dot dot com dot wordpress dot com um, and we are also on Twitter um, we became and you're on, on Facebook on Facebook you're on Facebook um, is this are you going after young men or any kind of a man who's not there for his kids and why it's important to be there absolutely absolutely um, you've walked the walk you, yes, you know what this is yes, about yes um, we're definitely our target right now are um, any 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 teens that's uh, be, uh, uh, below the age of 23, um, and we're looking to really um, go after um, the middle schools, uh, uh, high schools, and because uh, we find there's a, a a big missing common factor on the reason why uh, these teens aren't uh, being aren't striving on being fathers the best that they can, and that's because m majority of these teens. Uh, minority teens come from broken homes, uh, so we. So they feel, can't model exactly. They, they don't know what exactly. it's like. Exactly, and they don't. They don't even understand what's what's happening at the time. You know, um, I think they understand it a lot later in life, uh, when um, you know when they're getting in trouble in the law, and you know they're not doing too well in, in school, and they're dropping out of school, um, and not continuing their education. Um, the jobs that are available at the time. Um, so I think that they start understanding it later and, and at, a, at a later time in life. Uh, and sometimes that could be unfortunate, you know, and it could be discouraging at the same time too. Uh, so we feel like if we could be, um, if we could be a group of uh, creative uh, fathers and able to connect with them in a creative, out of the box thinking kind of way, um, I think that we have a shot on really making some uh, some uh, some really uh, leeway through this issue. Um, one of my one of I used to when I was growing up, I had a really hard time on really connecting uh, to church. You know, I knew I believed in God, um, and uh, but I to me at the time church was boring. 
you know, and it was one guy that really helped me get through those times, and that was uh, Kurt Franklin. Um, Kurt Franklin really, tr really um, put everything together in a way that uh, myself and other teens at the time could really think that church or feel that church is cool. It's not boring. And, um, and it's another way to get somebody with some foundation to go forward. So I, I said this to you early on. Are you ready to be that mentor, that leader? Because it might just come on your doorstep. Absolutely. Um, you know, to be honest, I, I didn't wake up, you know, and, and said, you know, uh, I want to be a leader and, and the fight on uh, fatherhood and, and, you know, teen fatherhood. But um, I think that everything happens for a reason. Um, I think, you know, this documentary was put together for one purpose, uh, and that was just to kind of give a special message uh, to my unborn child and um, other people that viewed it embraced it in their own ways and um, you know we're just moving toward toward what people are embracing it for um, and I think it's our responsibility if um, uh, if if we put something positive out there and people are latching on to it and seeing it as as a positive message I think it's our responsibility to, to follow through and I think that we have, um, I feel really confident that we have the pieces of uh, together to really um, make this thing happen and move forward and, and continue on with our movement and our message. Well, Alik Riley, it's We Became Men Through Fatherhood. All the best to you. Keep going because Connecticut mm -hmm. young guys need you and they need mentors. So thank you so much for coming in. I thank you, Ann. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for all the love. <laughs>